Textures come in many forms, even on our bodies, the skin texture. Now it's very obvious in this one particular image way up here. I'm gonna zoom in on this arm here. And when we look at it, we see that there is a skin texture to the arm. Now, I didn't create it like here. Of course, I always work higher resolutions and much larger files than what I need. So when I shrink them down to the size that I need for the final image, they rasterize and look nice and sharp. If we want to look at the original of that arm, we'll come right down here to the poster art. And there you can see that I have this area right here coming real close. And you see there's the skin texture. It's a skin texture, which was basically just copied off the skin on my arm. And I duplicated what I saw there to create this skin texture. Now, how did I do that? Well, let's go look at it. I here uh, an untitled file right here. And I'm going to create a skin texture. Now, I do it all in separate layers because I want the space between the lines that I'm about to create to be transparent. So, I'll get a very small brush. That's a good size right there. And uh, I'm going to bring the opacity up to 100%, and I'm going to rough it up just a little bit. So instead of being just a solid line, I want it to have a little bit of a nuance to it. So I'm going to turn off my pen pressure, but I am going to set the size, so I just kind of break it up a little, see? So it's not such a hard line anymore. So now I'm getting this kind of a rougher line. So now that I have that, I'm going to go in here and start to create my skin texture. Now looking at my arm, I just started to create these little shapes that started to kind of overlap each other like this. And I started creating all these little tones, all these little crevices and stuff which made up the skin the way I saw it on my arm, and so on. So when we come down here and we look at a whole section put together, here we see it. Now it looks like a large section, but what I really did was only this small piece right here. I just created this little section. Now I need it to be perfectly symmetrical for the point of step and repeat of a pattern. So I made a copy of it, and I put the copy right next to it. And then I connected those particular lines. See, so I took this section, brought it over, made a copy, and then connected those little sections through here with the little pieces that were missing. So now, in essence, I have a continuation. You notice that these two little segments right here are right here. So. Now I've got this big section here. So what I did is I took the entire thing and duplicated it down below. So now I have the beginnings of my continuous pattern here. Because we see that we have this box, which continues down here with this one right below it. And there's the two that are going in four places. So now I have to go in there and select my pattern. So I need to find a place where I can easily select these so they'll be seamless. So I call up my rulers and I bring out some paths. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to grab a path. I'm going to find a place where I can kind of clearly see an area of ending and starting right there. I'm looking at this little area right here and I'm placing my guide right at the beginning of those boxes right there. Now those boxes are on the outside, which means on this side, they have to be on the inside. So I'm going to grab another guide and I'm going to bring it in and put it right on the same position on this side. Now, if it's not exact, well, I can go in there and, and get real close and get real close on this. And I see that there's my guide right at the beginning of those two little boxes. So on this side, it has to be in the right place. So I'm going to go in there and grab that handle and just drag it right there. So now it's in the exact same spot as on the other side. So now I'm going to do that for a portion horizontally. So I'm going to go in there and find, again, a place where I can easily see some kind of a shape, it's like right here, this straight line. So I'm going to drag a handle straight down and place it right above that line right there. So now I look for that same little box down here, and I put the line in the same spot for this one down here. So I come down here, and I put it right there. So now I have my boundaries for my selection. Because the step and repeat, where it ends here, it picks itself up back over here. Where it ends here, it picks itself up back down here. So now that I have that, I'm going to turn off my background. So I have transparency between these. And when I pull back, I can now make that selection right within those guides. It's going to snap to the guides, and I just make it select like that. And I say define pattern. And we'll call it skin. And now that I have that, I'm done. So I can deselect it, and I can go over to uh, another file here. 
there's my hand where I'm going to be putting the skin. So let's first create the pattern so we can have it as a file we can take and put in other places. So I'm going to go right here to this untitled file where I started this little piece here. And let's throw that away. We don't want that. But in that layer, I'm going to fill it with that pattern we created. So I go in there and say pattern, and my skin should appear right there. There's the skin. Click OK. And there we see that we have this nice continuous pattern that seems seamless. There are no little places where you see a harsh line going across it where it stops and starts up again. No, it's fairly seamless. But the beauty is that now I have this file which has this pattern already in place, which I can just copy and drag somewhere else and so on. So I'm going to select all here. So I'm going to just go up here and say copy. Then I go to that other file where I have the arm by itself right here. Now it's going to paste it right here on top of this layer with the arm. So I'm going to say paste. And there I paste this little file here. So now, I only want it in sections. I want it in pieces. If I wanted it bigger, I would have created a much larger file and filled it. Or I could do that here. Let's say we uh, dump that. And since we still have the pattern in memory there, we can go in there and say, let's fill this. Fill this entire layer with that pattern. Now we have a larger piece that goes all the way across. Now I want this to follow the arm. So I'm going to pull back a little bit. Pull back. So I can see the whole area. And I'm going to take my warp tool and warp this pattern into shape. So I want it to kind of follow my arm like so. I'm going to start to grab these handles and start moving them around so that this pattern is not going to start to follow the contour of the arm itself. As you can see it happening here, let's grab this guy, bring it in, bring this guy up a little, bring this guy over. And there we can see that we're starting to get that wrap around the arm the way it should. It's just a question of studying the shape and then just having everything just wrap around. So there it is. Make it happen. And then I just clip it right onto here. Right there. It's clipped with that bottom arm so it's only visible in the arm. So now when I come in and look at it, I could bring down the opacity for it, but not really. I'm going to bring the opacity back up to 100 because of the fact that I want to give this a little kind of a texture to it, a little sense of depth. So I'm going to give it a layer style. I'm going to give it a little bevel and emboss. The bevel and emboss is going to just add this little texture in there. So I'm going to bring this down to about 1. And I'm going to bring up the highlight. So I get a really strong highlight. I'm going to have the light coming from right about here. And then uh, increase my darkness as well. And then I'm going to bring down the fill opacity so that the actual black lines start to go away. And I'm going to be left with this nice little texture right in there of the highlights and shadows. When I click OK, I can now bring down the opacity for the overall arm. So I just start getting this little hint of the texture on the arm. And then the final thing I'll do is I'll give it a mask. And then I start to go in and paint up the areas that I don't want to see. So I get a nice big brush with a soft edge. Make it really big here. And I'll start to paint. I lower my opacity for my brush so I don't get a really strong brush. And I just start to paint away certain areas where I don't want to see the skin because I don't want it all over the place. Just in certain areas where you're seeing those highlights in particular. That's where I want the skin to show up the most. And there you can see that we start to get this natural kind of a skin texture onto our skin. Now, how you apply this can be kind of a nice way of getting effects in other places. Let's go look at another place where that exact same skin texture was used. Like right here. He's got some on his skin, but when I zoom in right here to his hand, we'll see that here it is on his hand. But look, it's also on the watch. So if I go in here and look at that watch skin, I'm going to hold on my control key and click to say there's watch skin. And there's the skin right there. In this particular case, I gave it a drop shadow. So we're seeing this little shadow underneath that texture, which is giving us that nice little effect in there. So there's the same skin texture, except here now it starts to look like leather. Same texture, two different applications for it, and you get the effect to make it look realistic.